and welcome to a sleek, compact edition of Ben's Junk. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, if you're a die-hard archive viewer, you may have seen a channel update that I put out late last summer, and of the handful of topics I covered there, I devoted a few minutes to a Sencore VA62 video analyzer, which I picked up in the hopes of being able to generate my own test patterns. It only properly delivered a couple of patterns. Well, after that, I snagged a whole bunch of CCTV, uh, closed circuit TV adapters, and tried whatever I could think of with those, and I got no farther along. And it turned out that was just as well because the Sencore VA62 doesn't create the classic NTSC pattern to begin with. But Sencore made another unit that did, and not only that, it was designed to run through a VA62, and that would be the NT64. And as you can see, that appears to be totally screwed as well. It doesn't matter what settings I use, I can fiddle with this forever. Yeah. So, not wanting another brick to my name, I set about looking for alternatives. While I was looking around Fleabay for some other pattern generators, like not a Sencore, I found a single listing for some mysterious little pen-looking thing called the Calabar, as made by NewTek. And of course, NewTek is best remembered for the video toaster software back in the early 90s. Well, it appears that NewTek's little venture into hardware didn't go too well sales-wise. Now, as for current market value, I checked the completed and sold listings on Fleabay for another one of these, and I found nothing. Now, granted, that only goes back, what, six months or a year or something, but uh, certainly nothing in the recent past. So then, just trying to find any real information on this, I went and searched the web for period materials on it, and I, I did find one period article, and I checked around the AV broadcasty type forums, and I really only just found the occasional reference. So, as best as I've been able to gather, this was introduced in late 1997, early 98, and these were intended as a low-cost alternative to things like my Sencore. Now, of course, low-cost being kind of a relative term. This, as best as I can gather, sold for somewhere in the $350 to $400 range at the time. Now, of course, compared to the Sencore, that is kind of a bargain. Uh, I really don't know what my Sencore went for at the time. The only price I ever found is $1,200. I don't know how accurate that is. But we'll just say for argument's sake, $1,200. If this was $400, the Sencore was already triple that, and the Sencore was from about a decade earlier, so a little inflation in there as well. Anyway, whether or not I overpaid for this particular unit is very much open to debate. It wound up running me around $130 after shipping and tax, but my attitude was that, well, it seems to be fairly rare, so I guess instant oddity status. But also, I knew it worked. The Fleabay listing had a handful of pictures of the Calabar in use, and he still had the original box, and it had all the cables and adapters and the manual and stuff, and I knew I was certainly never going to find a smaller pattern generator, and I can also run this off of batteries or just plug it into the wall, and it's small enough, of course, that I can just keep it in my filing cabinet drawer where I keep my usual kind of everyday assortment of cables and adapters and batteries and stuff, so I can really make this just an easy everyday go-to thing for archive. Funnily enough, as of my making this, NewTek still has the manual for the Calabar available for free download on their website, and I didn't even know they were still in business. 
But definitely check that out if you want to see the exact specs. And even though it's only a few pages, it is a pretty dry read. So a fair warning on that front. And I should also note that there is already another YouTube video on the Calabar, and that features as much of a teardown as you can do on it. And the one and only period article I found on the Calabar came with a simplified schematic for it. So as such, I am not going to take this apart. I just, I see no reason to do that. I'll store the pertinent links in the video description. But anyway, between that video and article, it looks like this is pretty basic. It looks like it's just an EEPROM chip, of course, with the patterns stored on it, and a basic 10-bit DA converter, uh, digital to analog, and a couple of other little things, and then, of course, the final output, which is uh, this being a broadcasty thing, is BNC. Now, of course, that's nice for professional monitors, but it's really not an issue because, uh, well, let's get into the toys here. You've got a BNC to RCA composite adapter, and it's just a nice quick attachment. So now you can hook this up to any uh, older, at least, uh, consumer-grade North American TV, uh, some newer ones, too, if they have the legacy ports on them. And in addition to that adapter, we've got a BNC female coupler. We've got a BNC male to BNC male cable. We've got a pair of blue shades, uh, <laughs> shades of a video standard. And that's so if your TV doesn't have a blue only switch on it, which would be like just about every consumer grade TV, you can still calibrate the TV, uh, the chroma levels. And then of course we've got the aforementioned user manual. Now I do have one gripe about the Calabar and that's regarding batteries. So for one, you can't just pop in a normal AA or AAA battery. You will need a pretty specific 6-volt battery, uh, but given that this has the option to plug it into the wall, I've just been doing that. And uh, on the battery front, a polarity diagram would be much appreciated here. So uh, if you look down the barrel of this thing, hopefully you can see the spring. Now, of course, normally the negative end of a battery would go to the spring, but not on this. So, and they, again, there's no diagram or anything, and here, there's no marking. Now, I have seen in that other YouTube video, and I've read in some of the broadcasty forums that had references to this, that people were just carving a hatch mark into this piece, uh, to represent negative, so they knew which way to stick in a battery. So, if I do want to use a battery, I need to remember that it is the opposite of what I think it would be normally. And really, that's about it for the contents of the package. So let's take a cut here, and we'll see this sucker in action. And boy, is it thrilling. One righteously stupid thing I did in my testing of the Sencor stuff was I managed to fry the composite jack on the front of my little 13-incher. So now I need to find another one of these. And I really liked this TV. So as a temporary fix, I've just run a cheapy little RF modulator in so I can still use this. But as such, the image is going to be a little soft and not quite accurate. Uh, but then again, we're just pointing a camcorder at the TV here. But if I remember to, I will take some direct feed footage and I'll tack it on at the end of the video here. So anyway, we are dealing with a, a pretty standard batch of patterns. But uh, before we get to that, actually, let's just take a quick look at the Calabar, all hooked up, kind of on life support here. So we got the power... We've got my own composite cable, 
and a BNC to RCA adapter because I don't own any monitors with BNC. And everything with the Calibar just runs on this one button. That's the only button to choose from. So to power this on, you double tap. There we go. And then if I want to shut it off, I just hold the button down. And to switch between patterns, I just give it a single click. But anyway, we've got two dozen patterns to go through here, and I've got the manual handy to help me with the ones that I don't know the names of. But uh, for starters here, it's just the basic classic NTSC pattern. So let's jump to the next. So that is the Multiburst FCC, Modulated Ramp, a Black Burst, Basic white, a Luma ramp, 5 megahertz sweep with markers, cross hatch, red, 10 step Luma, 5 step Luma, a mixture of color bars and multiburst, a mixture of patterns 1 and 2, EIA bars with pluge. Though you'd never know it from this angle. Basic green, basic blue, basic black, magenta, cyan, bars with an emphasis on red, dots, uh, I guess to look for dot crawl, modulated five step, full field bars, modulated 10-step, and lastly, NTC7 composite. And uh, that's about it. I'll just give it one extra tap to bring it back to the beginning. So, um, yeah, it's just a series of patterns. No audio stuff, obviously. Nothing is adjustable within the Calibar that I'm aware of. The manual doesn't mention anything. But for my own purposes, I think it'll do just fine. Uh, I know there's plenty of times where I'm working on stuff that I'd like to be able to just put in something static on screen so I can set things up. So uh, it'll definitely fit the bill for that. And uh, I guess now I just need to try and find a really primitive, ancient character generator so I can redo the archive's opening logo and do it completely period analog appropriate. But that's another project for another day. So anyway, that is it for this Ben's Junk. I'll talk to you again soon.